When it comes to sentencing of adult offenders who commit sexual and hurt offenses, our position is that the sentences must reflect that such acts are deeply offensive to our fundamental values. Outrage or modesty is not merely an offense that a man commits because he is tempted by the way a lady dresses. Voyeurism is not merely a thoughtless act that a young student commits in a moment of folly. These and other similar offenses, whether committed against a female or male victim, should be dealt with seriously. These actions must be seen as an affront of fundamental values. There can in general be no excuses for these offenses. Mitigation pleas based on the offender's educational qualifications or academic potential should not carry much weight. For such offenses, principles of proportionate punishment and deterrence should generally take precedence over rehabilitation. This means if you touch a woman inappropriately without her consent, if you upload intimate images of an ex-girlfriend or any other woman, if you video record a woman showering, you must face serious consequences in law. And you shouldn't be able to come to court and say, you have a bright future, you will go far, and so on. You can go far, but first serve the sentence. If we make examples of some offenders, however bright their potential outlook in life, then the message of deterrence will likely be stronger. I'm going to ask the Ministry of Education to summarize these points and send to all students, boys and girls, so that everyone understands where we stand and they must realize that a moment of folly can lead to very serious consequences. And we will make sure our laws reflect this severity. That said, there may be exceptional circumstances. Let me give a couple of examples. An offender, for example, may have a very low IQ that affected his judgment as to right and wrong, or a serious mental illness that had a causal link to the offending conduct. Relevant offender-specific mitigating factors should generally continue to be taken into account. These factors should be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis with due consideration given to the harm caused to the victim and the need for deterrence. With this in mind, I will set out three steps that we are going to take now. One, increase penalties for three specific sexual offenses. Two, AGC will generally object to rehab sentences for adult offenders who commit certain sexual and hurt offenses, and three, a guide on sentencing will be published. First, increase in penalties for three sexual offenses. We, as members know, I've been coming repeatedly to amend these laws, and you, that you can see that from Annex 1. So we have been constantly reviewing. We did a further review of our penalties for sexual and hurt offenses in the penal code, including voyeurism, distribution of intimate images, uh, outrage of modesty, voluntarily causing hurt. In our view, the maximum penalties are properly calibrated for most of these offenses. And we have set them out in Annex 2. There are, are, however, three areas where we intend to increase the maximum punishments. First, outrage or modesty under Section 354.1 of the Penal Code. From 2016 to 2020, on average, we had 1,190 cases of OM reported each year which is about 24% higher than the previous period of 2011 to 2015. We want egregious cases to be dealt with more severely. We will increase a maximum imprisonment term from two years to three years. Second, where sexual activity in the presence of a minor takes place or sexual images are shown to a minor between the ages of 14 and 16, and if you compare that with exploitative sexual activity in the presence of a minor or showing a sexual image of minor between the, who is between the ages of 16 to 18 years, these two offenses are similar in nature to offenses involving sexual communications with minors. We will therefore correlate the penalties, increase the maximum sentence from one year to two years imprisonment. Second, 
Unless there are exceptional facts, AGC will, as a general rule, object to rehab sentences for adult offenders who commit certain sexual and hurt offenses. Where adult offenders, I emphasize adult, commit sexual and hurt offenses, the need for proportionate punishment and deterrence must take precedence over rehabilitation. This is a matter for the government to decide. It's a matter of policy. I have discussed this with AGC, and AGC agrees with our view. Therefore, AGC will hereafter generally object to rehab sentences such as probation and community-based sentences where the offenders are adults who commit certain types of hurt or sexual offenses. I should add that that's a general position they've taken anyway, but they're going to be much stricter about it. We will give due consideration to exceptional circumstances which may justify deviation from this general position. We have to in Parliament and executive, and of course, AGC in court. For example, where the facts of the case are such that rehabilitation should be the dominant sentencing consideration, you take a situation where a first-time adult offender with an intellectual disability touches a woman. It may, in certain circumstances, better serve the public interest to impose a rehabilitative sentence with appropriate conditions to reduce the likelihood of future reoffending rather than impose an imprisonment term. Take another example where the offender suffers from a treatable psychiatric condition that contributed to the commission of the offense, a mandatory treatment order may be more appropriate. The third step we will take is to publish a guide on sentencing in Singapore. To better educate the public about the sentencing process, MHA and MinLaw have worked with AGC and Law Society, and we have prepared a guide on sentencing in Singapore. This guide explains sentencing process in our courts, addresses important questions of public interest like what are the objectives of sentencing, what are the common types of sentences imposed by the courts, what factors do the courts take into account during sentencing, how do the courts decide what sentences to impose. The guide will be published on MHA, MinLaw, and AGC websites. Therefore, if I may summarize this part, in respect of sexual and hurt offenses, Based on what I've said, it should be clear an offender will not receive a lighter sentence simply because he has higher educational qualifications or has better prospects in life. 